Welcome back to our six part series of writing your will. And we are at the final part, part six, other considerations. So I've given you a very brief summary of the five different uh, main areas that you need to focus on when writing your will, things to consider when writing your will. There are many things to consider. So I, I can't, there's no possible way that in this short six part series that I can give you everything. Uh, but that's also why it's super important to go see a professional because we really talk about your specific circumstances. In the six part series, it's really hard to tackle every single individual possibility, but I hope that those areas are the main things to focus. Let's talk about some things that some other things that you may want to consider. Okay, primary and secondary wills. Primary and secondary wills are used for people that have mainly corporate assets. So what happens when we die is that whatever we leave behind is usually held by some sort of institutions, banks, you know, land registry office. And they basically say to the executors and to everybody, hey, we're not letting anybody touch anything because um, we don't know who you are go to court and get us a certificate that says you're the representative. That's what we call probate. That's the whole point of doing your will to make that whole process simpler. And when we do that, we got to declare to the court our assets and we got to pay a tax to the court. So one tax planning strategy is that we do double wills and we say, okay, well, we're going to make a primary will for those things that we absolutely need that certificate for. It's going to be things held in your name alone. But if you have things that we actually don't need that certificate for, for example, you own a corporation and your corporation has a lot of money in it, a lot of value in it. A corporation, its shareholders are the owners and it's usually a private little book. It's a private little book with a bunch of legal documents in it and it, to change the shareholders, all we really need to do is say so on the tax return and do the papers in the book. And so one tax planning strategy for those people that have corporations that are holding money in it, that are actively have a business that has a value in it, is to do a primary and secondary will. Let's exclude and keep private. Not only are we going to exclude it from the, from having to pay taxes, estate administration taxes, but we're going to keep it completely private. And so we're going to make this primary will for only those things that are absolutely necessary. And so that's one tax planning strategy. If you have corporate assets, you're definitely going to want to do that. Another, another strategy for primary and secondary wills, um, or for multiple wills, I should say, is if you have assets in different jurisdictions, every jurisdiction is different. Every jurisdiction has different succession laws, who can be trustee, who cannot, how should a will be signed? Do we have different inheritance laws? Every country is different. There is a possibility of doing an international will. My perspective is the best advice I can say is do a will in every ju different jurisdiction, limit the will to every different jurisdiction. You make sure you're going to want to make sure they're coordinated. So they're doing what you want them to do. You know, if you want to have an evenly balanced distribution, you're going to want to do that in every jurisdiction. That way, if you're doing the administration process in Canada and you have things in the U S or in the Caribbean, you can do these things simultaneously. You don't have to have the whole process be done here first and then incur all these costs and then move on to the next jurisdiction. Very time consuming for me, it's not worth your time. So think about that. Do you have stuff in multiple jurisdictions? Do you own a corporation that has value? You're going to want to talk about multiple wills. Another thing to think about is, uh, family businesses, family businesses, uh, that are growing in value and that you want to stay in the family. And this also includes real estate holdings. So real estate is still a business and businesses and real estate have capital gains triggered at death. Do you want to do advanced tax planning? Do you want to do an estate freeze? So we have other videos on our channel that talk about an estate freeze. And you might want to think about looking at that. It's basically, how do I, how do we reduce capital gains and keep the family business? in the family for the next person? How do we reduce or create a plan for those taxes that are going to get triggered at death? So if you have a family business, you need to start thinking about that long-term future planning. And just generally, you want to look at tax planning in general. What do I have? What am I going to grow in the future? Do I want to start putting these things in the name of corporations, in the name of holding companies? Do I want to have a family trust where I'm protecting all the assets so that they're in the family and they're going to stay in the family for generation upon generation and they're going to be insulated against the possibility of creditors, of matrimonial disputes and things like that. And so there's just a higher level of advanced planning that I want you to consider if you have things in different countries, if you have corporate assets, um, or if you have family businesses, or if you have very large real estate portfolios and you're looking to keep that in the family or within your loved ones, then it's something to think about. And all of this you're going to do in conjunction with the other documents that you have. And this might be, you know, if you have a marriage contract, if you have a shareholders agreement, if you have a partnership agreement, so this is more high level estate planning on writing your will. This isn't relevant for everybody. So that's why I left it to part six, but if it is relevant to you, then I'm going to say the first thing that you should do is you consult your 
accountant, your financial advisor, and your lawyer. And it's probably best to have a joint meeting between all of us so that you can have the most effective estate plan going forward. So I hope that you've enjoyed the six part series and that you've learned something. And if you're planning to write your own will, I hope I've scared you enough to think about it twice. Uh, and if you're ready to write your own will, then I hope you get in touch.